Visualizing what the climate could be a year, a decade, or even a century from now is the task of a select group of scientists. Funded by the Nevada APSCOR Climate Change Project, these researchers are peering into the future to see what changes may occur, and they do this by creating models. Models are designed to allow us to explore potential change in the future. They're not designed to predict this will happen or that will happen. Like architectural models that show what a house may look like when built, climate change models simulate what could happen in the future based on what happened in the past. A characterization of what could happen, and it's not complete because um, there's a lot of elements in the physical world that we don't know exactly how they work. It's a very complicated business. Scientists use observations from the field, historical records, and even other models to create scenarios. People usually trust observations, but there's no way that you know what will happen in the future unless you have a model. The models themselves are uh, built uh, on the, our best estimate of the physical equations that actually describe the physics. So as much as possible, we try to make the models predictive in the sense that they solve equations to predict uh, the evolution of the climate system. But there are always parameters in the model that uh, we need to constrain with observations. Some of the funding provided by the Nevada Climate Change Project was used to purchase a supercomputer to supply the computing power and storage needed for large climate change simulations. These simulations will help the scientists answer questions important to Nevada. One of the really pressing questions in the western United States, of course, is water resources. So uh, we're very concerned that climate change will have significant impacts on water resources. So one of the things we're hoping uh, by providing projections of possible scenarios for future climate change is then using that information in conjunction with, by interacting with hydrologists to try to understand what the future impacts on hydrology might be and water resources. Uh, these are very, very tough questions. Part of the, what we are doing now is trying to understand what the end user needs. And as far as we know, uh, in terms of reliability and uh, the um, importance of what they really want is uh, based on temperature and precipitation. So those are the two variables that most people kind of uh, want to have. It's been uh, valuable for us modelers who are simulating the climate system to be able to interact with them because we hope that they're going to use the information that our models are able to provide. And, and, and it's, a, it's a collaborative learning process where we try to figure out what it is, what kind of information they can really make the most use of. And they're learning what kind of information we're capable of giving them from our models. So in that way, both sides are, are learning and we're working towards a goal that probably neither of us could accomplish on our own. So what's in the future for Nevada climate change modelers? I believe in uh, five years we'll have a, I would say, so-called virtual center for the regional climate modeling, which will be then actually producing different results in the projects from ecology all the way to hydrology. People usually say everything begins with data, but on the other hand, the future begins with the models. The preceding program is made possible through support from the National Science Foundation. A production of UNLV's Hank Greenspun School of Journalism and Media Studies and UNLV-TV.